Three different input shafts for the E4OD and 4100 transmission. On the left, this is a factory E4OD input shaft. In the middle, this is a factory 4100 input shaft. And on the right, this is an aftermarket higher strength input shaft. All three are geometrically the same. <clears throat> They'll fit in either one of the transmissions, but there's differences. The E4OD, this is the torque converter end, where the splines meet the journal portion, you see a reduced diameter here. For whatever reason, Ford's designed allowed for that, uh, but when you have a reduced diameter here, you have a stress concentrator. This, this shaft is gonna break right here every time, you know, in a, in a higher horsepower application. I've seen these much, much worse than this. This one's actually not too bad. Um, that probably just depends on whatever vendor Ford used for that particular shaft. If you have your E4OD out of your truck and you're looking for a cheap, quick, easy improvement, you can get yourself a 4R100 input shaft. It does not have that reduced diameter here. Um, so these are gonna be much stronger than that. These will still break, no doubt about it, with high horsepower, but it's one less, one less spot where it's gonna break. You're basically just moving the weak link somewhere else when you do that. Uh, now what you cannot get cheap <laughs> is this this is uh 300m material this is what is referred to as billet a billet input shaft now like most most terms on the internet billet is misused billet just describes a shape so if you're in the if you're in the materials business you're buying and selling raw steel words like billet ingot slab sheet they just describe the form of the steel that you're purchasing so a billet is nothing more than a solid rod round rod square rod that's all that is it has nothing to do with the material these were billet i got a whole pile of billet behind me um what makes it valuable is the material uh in this case it's 300 m 300 m is 4340 steel modified uh i can't speak to the alloy specifically but they tweaked it somehow to probably improve the torsional strength properties of it for this application uh, the 300 implies up to 300 ksi material strength ksi is kips per square inch one kip is a thousand pounds so this is up to 300,000 psi um, typical steels are between 30 and 80 ksi we don't know because it's all based on the heat treatment process. Just like we don't know exactly how strong this is because, it, like I said, it's up to 300 KSI and that's dependent upon whatever heat treatment process they applied to it. Uh, the vendor in this case advertises a 2,000 foot pound capacity for this input shaft. Um, I don't know if that's based on the 300 KSI number or if they actually did real world destructive testing to figure that out. But nevertheless, this is much stronger than that. As a as a consumer, we don't we don't get too worried about what I'm explaining here. You know about material properties. We just we see words like billet and we want it. You know we want to buy that. We see 2,000 foot pounds. We want that in our truck. We want who doesn't want 2,000 foot pounds? Um, but you know for the most part it's true. This is significantly stronger than these. When I do whenever I build a transmission for a higher horsepower application. They get billet input shafts, they get billet intermediate shafts. Um, it's, it's a significant improvement over stock.